YouTube, what's up? Um, we're back with another video series. Um, this again, this one's going to be a, a review, slight review, of circuit theory, uh, specifically <coughs> Norton and Thevenin equivalent circuits um, of circuits that have dependent sources, which complicates things a little bit. So hopefully you remember the the basics of finding Norton and um, Thevenin equivalents. So uh, uh, the main idea is that we're taking some complicated circuit, a network, and uh, we're simplifying it down into, uh, for the, in the case of the Thevenin, just a voltage source and a resistor, or in the case of the Norton equivalent circuit, it's a, a current source in parallel with a resistance. So let's jump right in here, and then we'll start trying out say we have a s circuit with a voltage source VI and uh, let's make a network here of resistors so we'll have we'll call this R1 we're gonna have a dependent current source all right and we're gonna put the current going this way just for fun and um, Let's see, we'll have another resistor over here, R2. So that's our R2. And we'll have some output terminals, which are right here. These are our output terminals. So what we're trying to attempt to do here is, again, this is review. Take this whole circuit, everything that's inside here, right? Everything in these dotted lines, and simplify it into a Thevenin equivalent circuit, which is going to look something like, so we'll have our Thevenin voltage source right here in series with the resistor. And this is our RTH, our Thevenin resistance. So how do we go from here to here? Um, well, the first step is to find, um, let's see, our open circuit voltage at the output of our, our original circuit. So that's VOC, which is really going to be our VTH, right? And then, so that's step one. Our second step is we're going to short these two terminals and find the current through here, and that's going to be our open, that's, sorry, <laughs> that's going to be our short circuit current. Um, so let's get cracking on finding our VTH. We'll jump right in. Uh, let's see. Uh, first, we need some information about this circuit, right? So let's say we know some information. Let's say known information is actually we would need beta I, and we need to identify I. So let's call this right here. This current up this branch is I. Okay, hope you can read that. Okay, so known information. Let's say we know beta. Obviously, we will know beta. In this case, it's 150. Um, we'll know the value of our resistors. So R1 is going to be 100K. 100 kilo ohms. That's R1. So we know R2, which is uh, 39 kilo ohms. 39 kilo ohms. Awesome. <coughs> okay. So, just by observation to get started on this, let's write an equation for VOC. I'll use the same color over here. So, we should recognize right away that VOC should be equal to, well, let's see what's the best way to do this. Uh, we can say the current in this branch multiplied by the resistance should give us VOC. So let's label this current. Do we even need to? Yeah, we'll label that current. Uh, so we'll call this current I2. Right. So um, VOC is simply I2 times R2. Right, and um, 
where can we go from here? Let's see. Right, so uh, next thing we have to do, what is I2? Well, if we look at I2, I2 is a current coming up this way. And because this is an open circuit here, I2 is going to be exactly the current that's in this branch, which is beta I2. So we can rewrite this, substituting I2 for beta I. So we'll have beta I times R2 as our VOC, our open circuit voltage, which is also our Thevenin, right, RTH. So that, this is all equal to VTH. We know the value of R2. We know the value of beta. So what is I? That's what we're left with here. I. So solving for I, um, we can simply say that I, right here, um, using the same thing we did here for I2, we can say that I is negative, right? We're, we're going to use voltage VI. It's, so it's going to be VI, again, just by Ohm's law, VI by R1. So that works. Um, the, the current through this branch is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance. So substituting this equation into here, we should be able to solve for our VTH. Let's try that. So let's say VTH. VTH is equal to now is this going to be negative? Did I make a mistake somewhere? I don't think so. Yeah. Is that really going to be negative? Aha! I see where I've made a mistake. Um, so if VOC, be careful of doing this. Uh, VOC, we're going to have to define it like this, uh, positive up here, minus over here. So <coughs> if we're going to define VOC as I2, R2, we are going to have to do one of two things. <laughs> we're either going to have to flip this arrow pointing down because it would the current we're saying is going down, or make this negative. So just to make this easy, we'll call this negative I2, which means I2 is really going down through the branch. So this is going to be negative I2 here. Always got to be careful of your signs. We're going to carry the negative sign to this side. Okay, now everything should work out correctly. Woo! All right, I'm glad that wasn't worse. I thought that mistake might have been more costly. Okay, so what we're going to end up with is beta times I. Oh, we're substituting I for, all right? Oh, don't forget the negative sign from up here, okay? Negative beta times negative VI over R1 times R2. Um, yeah, these go away. Let's write this in terms of VI. That's ultimately what we want. We ultimately want VTH in terms of I, and I'll show you why later. Um, so what we're going to end up with here is, let's see, beta times R2 by R1 V ins, V i's. And using our values that were given over here, we could substitute in 150 for beta, 39 for R2, 39k for R2, 100 for R1, uh, push that in the calculator, and we get 58.5 VIs. 58.5 V 
eyes. Okay, so that's our value for VTH. Great. Uh, we'll put a box around this because that's important. Uh, now our second step is to determine our short circuit current, right? So that's the current. If we take a short, we short this bit out right here. We need to find the current through there. And um, the other thing that we need to do is uh, replace all, set all dependent, independent sources to zero. So uh, we're going to be replacing this voltage source with a short. Uh, we could accomplish that just by putting a short right next to it, and I'll do it in this lighter color. So we're going to short out this voltage source. And we're going to, going to apply a test voltage here. Okay. So we're going to apply a test voltage. Plus, minus. We'll call our test voltage V sub X. This is getting pretty messy. I apologize. Um, but just know that we have a test voltage here. That's not right at all. Uh, no, you don't actually short this out. That would short out my test voltage. Right? So we just want to find the, the current. The short circuit current is also the current that's going through this test voltage. So we apply a test voltage. We're finding the current through this branch. And we'll call that current, I don't know, I sub x. So I sub x is going to be coming in this way. Uh, now to solve this, what we need to do is apply Kirchhoff's current law, or KCL. So let's go ahead and define a node to apply KCL at. And um, I just checked the time, and we're running pretty late. So we're going to cut the video off here, and um, in the very next video, we'll pick right back off where we left um, applying KCL at this node. We'll call this node A right here, okay, to find our short circuit current. All right, see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and favorite if you want. See you soon.